I want to talk very briefly about the concept of user levels and how they're managed. As we discussed previously, there are three user levels in OCalc Pro. There's a general user, restricted user, and administrative user. And every attribute in the system um, has encoded into it the level of user required to edit that value. So there are some values that are edited just by in general by most people. There are certain values that you want a more knowledgeable user to adjust and then there are certain values you really don't want anybody to adjust except an administrator. So the question becomes well how do you control what level, what rights a particular user using OCALC has? Uh, in a system where you've got an administered network, and so you have an IT department and so on, it's pretty straightforward. What you do is you set up two Windows users groups, and you can see them right here. The first is OCALC administrators, and the second is OCALC restricted. And as their names implied, um, people who are a member of the administrators group can, be, can elevate their rights to administrator. People who are members of the restricted group can ele elevate their rights to restricted but no further. And so if you have your IT department set up these two groups named as such, the system goes and looks, sees if those groups exist, and goes ahead and uses them. So I happen to be a member of both those groups, so if I go down here I can in fact set my level to administrative, and you notice that, um, well let's, let's actually let's switch back to general. Let's go look at something like a primary. Typically, um, you wouldn't want an average user to be changing the weight constant and the diameter constant that describe a particular brand of cable the time, as, I, as I extracted it from the catalog. You, know, you would want them to extract the correct kind of cable and then just go ahead and use it, setting its length and its uh, sag and so on and so forth. But if I'm a restricted user, I can go ahead and switch over to restricted and you can see that now the span diameter and the span weight uh, have switched over. Now the way I knew that switching my user level higher would in fact allow me to edit that, let's go back again to general, is that in addition to showing gray in the edit cell which says this value is something that I cannot edit, the label was darkened and now what the darkening of the label tells me is that value is not editable because I have insufficient privilege to edit it. Let's look at a different kind of a value. Here we have uh, something where we have pole class and pole length and pole manufactured length and species and these values you'll see are not editable but in fact the label portion is normal color. This is telling me not that this is not editable because I have insufficient privilege, but it's not editable because when the schema was designed, it was designed not to be editable. Typically what this means is that this value has to be modified in conjunction with other values. You aren't going to change a poles class without changing, for example, its circumference. And so only very specialized users can in fact get at these. Now if I go down and I switch my user level to administrative, all bets are off. I can edit anything anywhere and as a result it's wise to only have users who really know what they're doing set up as administrative users. There is no value that should require administrative access that w you would typically edit. So that's the general concept of um, user levels. Oh, so you might say, well, what if I'm not in an environment where I can set up Windows users groups? Well, then the way it works is based on what access rights do you have to the local workstation, laptop, desktop that you're working on. If you have full administrative rights, then you get full administrative rights. It lets you develop, uh, elevate yourself all the way up to administrative. Otherwise, you're going to be restricted down to the restricted level and if and uh, in that case the restricted versus general is pretty much just a convenience for you to let you know what you're doing. So really the lowest level you can be on a standalone workstation is restricted. You can't go all the way, you can't force anybody all the way down to general. 
But that being said, you can add Windows Users Groups to standalone machines as well. And if you do that, if those Windows Users Groups exist, then they will be honored. So that's the way user levels work in OCalc Pro.